She's a queen city of the south, but she ain't no southern belle. She's a bourbon drinking broad, made hard by her battles and wars, diseases, and other floods. But at night, her street lights are the twinkle in her eyes, and from the high rise on those nights when the clouds have deserted the rainmaker, you can find life in them sockets that sparkle like the big tipper. But when the levees broke, our hope got soaked, and so did the twinkle in her eyes. And it was wondered if this might lead to our demise. Because from the high rise, you can see what is left when light is sucked back into the belly of its creator. The remain in darkness wrapped his arms around the mangled body of the city, hiding her gaping wounds from a nervous moon who wondered what happened to the music and wanted to know how come lately the rain smelled like tears. The sad smell of fearful children and waterlogged dreams made the moon blue. The rancid smell of neglect and raw sewage made the moon reflect badly on the water in the United States government. So badly, the blue moonshine drinker got full, started pulling at the water and kicking up a storm. Articles in the New York Times titled Death of an American City had people from uptown to the lower ninth ward pinching themselves and blowing in mirrors, looking for confirmation of life while trying not to lose hope, like Mr. Joe, who was a consummate optimist because he had hope all of his life. And when he was first given the news about its flooded home, he woke up every morning to a cup of coffee in the hope that things were not as bad as they said. And this time he embraced hope firmly in his hands because he was a carpenter. But he turned his head long enough to wipe his eyes and blow his nose, only to turn back and find that his hope had flatlined in his hands, a double Katrina whammy. Too much pressure on his 70-year-old heart. So days later, he went the way of his hope. And his friends wondered what hurt most. Was it the destruction of his home or the death of his hope? Talking head serving up 24-hour news slop referred to us as refugees. Just before, a U.S. congressman suggested that the old girl be mold forcing us to collect the link, fish our birth certificates from the toxic soup to find that space that talk about place of origin to see if we really did live in a city that really was in a state that really was in the United States of America looking for confirmation of citizenship. And the replay was called a requiem in four acts, so we found our reflection in the muck and whispered in its ear. Can you tell us if we're still alive, please? Unable to come up with the right words, our reflection didn't answer back, and we were, were, were unnerved by the silence because the eulogizers were beginning to eulogize. But then, we saw your tambourine shake. And we heard your drum beat. And when we felt the hot air streaming from the fatting of the brass. knew that it was the breath of the city and it was the confirmation that we were looking for so we shouted out to the grave digger hold on to your dirt partner because we ain't dead yet Thank you very much, thank you.